Hello, fellow foodies. You've all heard about Caribbean green seasoning at some point, right? The green gold of the Caribbean, the best all natural marinade, and hopefully you've watched my comprehensive video on how to make it. Well, today I'm going to teach you how to make it work for you. If there's one recipe you need to learn in 2021, this is it. This is the roasted chicken recipe that has kept my family healthy with its clean, simple, natural ingredients. It helps me to lose weight, it's budget friendly, and has helped us to technically save thousands of dollars on expensive work lunches in New York City for the past 20 years. It's super quick to put together, especially if you have homemade green seasoning in the fridge, and it's my personal, simple, ultimate comfort food. If these are also your goals and desires, let's start cooking! Normally, one would spatchcock the chicken and that is cutting down the backbones. Uh, but I do have my own technique, which I will show you in just a second. First, I'm going to remove the tip of the wings. And there's another tip attached to the wings there that I usually remove as well. You can certainly spatchcock your chicken, but take a look at my technique and decide which one will work for you. Instead of cutting down the back, I cut along the breast to divide it in two, and I'll show you why in a second. Just apply a little pressure to break that bone there, and then we'll lay it flat. Someone commented on one of my videos that there's no such thing as excess skin or fat, so this is totally optional. You don't really have to cut that skin if you don't want to. I usually cut the skin off at the base of the chicken there because I find that it has a lot of fine feathers that's very difficult to remove. Next I'll show you how I cut the chicken if I'm preparing it for the grill. I'm going to cut it down just one more time. And feel free to do this on a cutting board. You could place it whole on the grill, but you risk overcooking the breast. Follow the edges of the breast. And you cut. And that's it. And this here, many people eat it. It's all up to you. It's a delicacy for some. So, Today I'll cut it off, just not to freak anybody out. Also, when, you, when you're washing a chicken, you place your thumb in here, in the crevice here, and you push up. And you see that gunk? We want it out. That's excess fat. And you'll have a cleaner flavor of chicken if you remove all that stuff. You remove the freshness and see, I think I've gotten it all. Let's pull it out. Make sure there's none here. And some inside here. So you just push it out. Clean it. Do the same for this one, but there's none. All right, it's good. Next, we'll give it a really good rub down with the juice of a lime or lemon to remove any freshness. Remove all the feathers. Next, we'll remove the film from the base of the leg. Sometimes it comes out easily and other times it really takes effort. If it's taking too long and I need to get dinner on the table, I make the executive decision to leave it in. I promise you it's not the end of the world. Sometimes if it's not laying flat on the tray, I remove a portion of the backbone. This is not necessary for a normal human being, but if you have even an inkling of OCD, making your chicken level is the ultimate goal. 
And here's a prime example of why I cut it down the front and not the backbone. As you can see, the wing is protecting the breast meat. It will prevent it from overcooking and drying out because nobody wants a dry breast. And now I will season the chicken. I always use about one tablespoon of Himalayan salt for about four pounds of chicken. Make sure to get that salt into every crack and crevice of that chicken because a roasted chicken without salt is like doubles without any condiments, any pepper sauce or tamarind sauce or chutney and nobody wants that as well. Next, a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper and if you take the time to freshly grind your black pepper and I do it every Sunday or once every two weeks, it really makes a difference. I believe in using simple ingredients to create flavor, but it has to be the best ingredient. And here is the star of the show, the dinner saver, the life saver, the money saver. I usually use about half cup of green seasoning for four pounds of chicken. This is also the recipe we make every Sunday even on our lazy days it's so easy to prepare and one of the first recipes i wrote down for my husband now if i don't feel like cooking or making his lunch or if i don't feel well or if i just want to rest and vegetate on a sunday afternoon he knows how to prepare his baked chicken for the week isn't this the easiest prep we sprinkled some salt some black pepper and we're gently brushing the green seasoning on and that's it. Next, we will drizzle some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, the best quality oil you can buy. Just drizzle it generously over the entire surface of the chicken. Next, I squeeze the juice of a lime or lemon over the chicken because my husband loves the flavor. Squeeze the juice through your fingers if picking up these seeds is too much work for you. To repeat the seasoning on the other side. Sprinkle of salt, black pepper, rub it all in and all around the green seasoning. All under the skin. And this is a base recipe. You can really make this your own by adding butter or any other ingredients and I'll show you in a couple of seconds how we change it up a bit. Keep in mind that if you bake it in a narrow pan like this you will have juices at the end but if you bake it in a wider sheet pan you won't have any. Your hands are the very best tools in the kitchen so feel free to use it. This basic green seasoning version is absolutely perfect in its simplicity but if variety is the spice of your life then you can add some of your favorite spices. Today I'm adding a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of roasted ground cumin, and about two teaspoons of curry powder. The basic green seasoning version is a blank canvas for your creativity in the kitchen. Let me know below what's your favorite seasoning for your chicken. A final drizzle of olive oil and it's ready to go in the oven. If you do have time, you can certainly marinate this for a couple of hours or overnight in the refrigerator cupboard. The longer it marinates, the better it tastes. You can increase the cumin to make it an oven roasted jira chicken. And if you want curry in a hurry without all that chunky drama, then this is the solution for you. This is just a long video to show you how to season a chicken in less than one minute. Some things in life just don't make no sense. But it's all necessary to help you make the best baked or roasted chicken you've ever eaten. How absolutely gorgeous does that look? And I promise you, it's going to taste even better than it looks. And for another bonus tip, you can use this recipe successfully with baby Cornish hens. This way you'd never get bored of the same old recipe. Place a chicken in the middle rack of a preheated oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, about 175 Celsius, and bake for about 1 hour and 10 minutes, or until cooked to your desired doneness. Presenting the perfect roasted chicken. 
crisp on the outside, moist and juicy and flavorful on the inside. You really have to give this one a try. And here's your cumin curry version. The house smells absolutely amazing. And this one is moist on the outside because I basted it every 30 minutes. Basting is optional, baking and enjoying is mandatory. Mmm, so so good. And for your viewing pleasure, here is the outdoor barbecue grill smoker. It's a beautiful day version. The possibilities are truly endless.